I mean, I won one game uh, with VG against T1, but we were losing really hard, and then T1 got kind of too aggressive, and they threw the game. I can say that I'm 50% win ratio against Faker, but uh, I, I, I wish it uh, it will only go up, not down, uh, tomorrow or like in two days. But I think it will be definitely way harder than it was against uh, PSG. Hey guys, this is Ashley King of Horizon Esports. This interview has been powered by Republic of Gamers. And I'm joined by Inspired, the jungler of FlyQuest, after they do defeat PSG on a 2-1 match goal on the first day of 2024, MSI. Hey Inspired, thank you so much for joining me. How are you feeling right now? Uh, I'm happy we won. Um, I think uh, it could have been a 2-0. So I was, we were a little bit sad after game one, because I think we kind of threw the game away from our hands. But uh, we managed to... Uh, stay focused and come back, so I'm happy about that. I mean, FlyQuest brought a lot of different things to the table today. Uh, they picked Urgot, and then, like, you know, people was like looking pretty good on it. Uh, FlyQuest was very frequently um, doing lane swaps. I was earlier having an interview with Maple who said, yeah, the lane swaps may have thrown us off of it. Uh, what, what can you tell me about the preparations that FlyQuest had leading up to today's series? Uh, I mean, we played in practice uh, a lot of te- against a lot of teams that were trying to pull off the lane swaps when they felt like they needed it in the game. And uh, yeah, we, we just kind of learned uh, during practice how to do it and when we should be aiming to do that. And I think uh, PSG was kind of not really prepared for that. So I think that's why we kind of get a, a great start in game one and game two because of uh, our strategies. People expect the meta to change between play-ins and the tournament stage. That always happens, the meta develops. But do you think this lane swap meta is something we are going to continue to see uh, throughout the rest of the MSI tournament? Um, I feel like it uh, favors the worst team to do lane swap. Because then the games become very chaotic. And uh, I feel like even better players can make wrong decision in the moment like let's say the jungler will go to the wrong side or he will start on the wrong camp and then he will get delayed by enemy team so it's kind of good if you are a worse team to force the swap and then try to force enemies to make mistakes because if you are really prepared and you know exactly how you want to execute it maybe enemy will not know exactly how to counter it so i can see uh teams uh, trying it because uh, yeah, I think it's it's hard to beat Asian teams uh, when the game is just normal because uh, they're just really good at every role and uh, they, all of them have really big champion pools. So it's like hard to attack them in the draft. It's hard to win lane against them. So it's kind of good if you make the game chaos and uh, just try to play well in the chaos. Ah, speaking of facing good teams, I know that we are still looking forward to the result of uh, T1 versus EST, but it does look like you'll go against T1 in the next match. What are your thoughts on that upcoming matchup, can FlyQuest beat T1? Uh, um, I, I would love to say yes, uh, but I mean, I won one game uh, with VG against T1, but we were losing really hard and then T1 got kind of too aggressive and they threw the game. So I can say that I'm 50% win ratio against Faker, but uh, I, I wish it, uh, it will only go up, not down uh, tomorrow or like in two days. But I think they are a really strong team, so it might be it might be a hard game. But uh, yeah, today we showed some lane swaps. Maybe we can also surprise T1 with with those kind of plays and and uh, yeah, just get the win. But I think it will be definitely way harder than it was against uh, PSG. What do you think will be the key points throughout the match? Um, you mentioned the lane swap. Is there any other things that we should keep our eyes out for? I mean. I think we were, we started playing more aggressive on both sides, especially Masu, uh, compared to our LCS games. So people maybe don't really expect what we are going to play. Like today we played Lucian and I think PSG was not really ready for it because we didn't really play it in LCS. So I would say that our playstyle maybe changed a little bit compared to what people saw of us in, in America. And uh, what I would like highlight during T1? I'm not sure, honestly. I mean, they are very very well around the team. They don't have any weak points. So it's hard to say like what you can abuse on the on their team. I think we just have to make sure we are uh, not losing too hard in the early game. And then going into team fights, maybe we will be able to uh, like get some outplays and, and maybe beat them that way. Because, yeah, I don't see really a way to make the game uh, open in the early game. I feel like it's best for us if we can just farm up and scale up a bit and then see them in the team fight. And maybe some Baron steals and Drake steals from you is fine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think that, that I think that would definitely help a lot. 
Speaking of Masu, because you mentioned Masu playing Lucian really quickly, it is true that he hasn't had any history on Lucian, but he looked really good on form with it. And in general, um, a lot of people were commenting just how good um, Masu and Busio's form look right now. Um, did FlyQuest's recent Korean bootcamp help? And what do you think, especially the bot lane of FlyQuest, took out of that experience? I think uh, for sure it helped a lot. I think Masu was able to learn a lot from uh, watching how Korean A display because I think even though we are not playing against like top Korean teams in practice, uh, the AD carries are still really good because I mean pretty much every Korean player in the LCK is good. So it's like even the bottom teams, you can learn a lot from them uh, by playing laning phases and stuff like that. So I think Masu was just... Uh, uh, trying to to learn uh, when to trade and how to trade with Lucian. Then he was watching a lot of uh, um, uh, Elk VODs from the from the Lucian game to see how he wants to play his Lucian. And uh, we felt like we didn't really need it in a name to win. But uh, coming into this tournament, we feel like uh, most of the teams will play play him, play Lucian Nami and uh, this kind of matchups. So we wanted to be prepared to be able to pick it up ourselves. Inspired, you always sp spoke very highly of the LPL and the LCK teams. Would you say that the gap between the West and the East is that big right now? I get really conflicting messages regarding this subject. Yeah, I feel like it is. I think people are saying that it's not that big, but at least at least for uh, LCS speaking, because I don't know exactly how LEC is doing. Like in screams, maybe like BDS team is good, maybe uh, Fnatic and the the f fourth team. I don't know. Like I don't know what who even finished fourth, but like top four teams maybe are good in uh, in EU. But uh, just judging from LCS, uh, I feel like even playing against TL was uh, maybe easier than playing against like top six teams in LCK. Uh, from my perspective. So I feel like LCK teams are just really strong and same for FPL. So, I mean, in my opinion, the gap is big, but the gap is always bigger in practice because in practice, I feel like they don't have any nerves on them and they're just playing how they're used to and then they just win lanes and then snowball from that. But when it comes to stage, people don't really tend to play over aggressive. They play a little bit slower. And when you play a little bit slower, like it opens up windows that you can kind of abuse and, and win the game that way. That's why I feel like as a NA or EU team, even if you are losing in practice, you need to not lose confidence because at the end of the day, LPL and SK players are also humans, so they can make mistakes in, in the pressure situations and you can always try to get the win uh, like that. You were the ones that upset T1 back in 2022 MSI, so... Yeah, I mean, I did. I think they kind of upset themselves. They were winning really hard, and then they kind of misplayed some situations, and they get us a win. But win is a win. Uh, some I was really happy back then. Like I couldn't believe it when we beat T1. I was like, wow, we actually beat T1. Um, hopefully, I can uh, have the same feeling to like in two days. We'll see. Um, I, I I believe that we can win, but I know it's gonna be a really hard task. Whichever the match goes, we will look forward to your performance. Um, thank you so much for the interview inspired. I was going to ask you one more question, but I think we ran out of time. So best of luck for the rest of the MSI and I'll see you soon. Thank you. See ya. Thank you. Bye bye. <laughs>